Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about kind of just some strategies for testing series. So what I have is going to be just a whole bunch of problems listed and I'm going to talk through them. I'm not going to work them out. Um, I'm going to give you what I think the answer is and the way that I would attack it and kind of what makes me think why to do it the way that I do it. You know, what, what, what makes me say, oh, I should use the limit comparison test, or oh, I should use the ratio test, for example. Because again, I think the hard thing with series is simply figuring out how to get started. There's also a lot of, uh, you know, obviously a bunch of different tests you have to remember and all the tidbits, but um, it's just tricky. It's not always quite so straightforward. I think another way, another thing you could use this video for, on the next page, or my next, uh, slide, my next board, there's a ton of practice problems. What you could also do is, you know, pause it at the beginning, try to work on those problems if you have a test, show if they converge or diverge. If you get stuck, again, I'm just going to talk through in this video, so if you get stuck, find the one that you need to. I'm going to say basically how you can do it, and, you know, all the tidbits won't be there, but if you're just not sure at all how to get started, at least at that point, you'll get a start on it. I'm sure in, uh, in some other videos, I'll make solutions to all of them so you can even check it if that helps. So kind of a practice test if you want to use it that way. Again, not a cookbook. Um, it's just going to be some general ideas, you know, some, some, some things to hopefully, it's just something to think about so you, you, you know, you're not completely grasping for straws. Um, a couple things. I'm going to assume you know quite a bit uh, the test for divergence. You're going to know what a geometric series is. You know this converge if the ratio is between negative 1 and 1. Telescoping series, actually I don't think any of my uh, examples deal with telescoping series. People tend to talk about these a little less, so you may or may not have to worry about them so much. Definitely got to know what a P-series is. Remember that P-series converge if the P is greater than 1. Limit and direct comparison tests. To use the limit and direct comparison test, you often use those in conjunction with geometric and P-series. So, um, again, geometric and P-series being very important. Integral test, you got to know what an alternating series is, what absolute convergence is, ratio and root test. So, oh, a little sloppy here, because um, I started making it once and I decided I didn't like it, so a few things here erased at the beginning. Sorry about that. So, let's just talk through them. Um, again, I'm not going to work anything all the way out, just some tidbits on how I would get started on these problems. So. The very first one, we've got the summation n squared minus 1 over n squared plus n. The very first thing I always think about for just about any series is the test for divergence. And remember the test for divergence says if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the stuff, it says if that limit is not zero, the series automatically diverges. Well, certainly the limit of this stuff is going to equal 1. Hey, that's not zero. So just by the test for divergence, you can show that this series is going to diverge. Recall that if the limit does equal zero, we can't say anything. Um, otherwise, if we could, if that was it, we wouldn't bother with all these other processes. Um, but certainly this limit's not zero, so it's going to diverge. Second one, 1 over n squared plus n. Well, here the limit does equal zero. Anything can happen. The thing that I look at that stands out to me the most is I kind of look at the highest power on top. Well, there's only a 1. There's nothing else to really consider. But I look at the highest powered thing in the bottom, which is n squared. And I think about that series, which is a convergent p series. And what you can actually do is just simply use the limit comparison test and um, compare it to 1 over n squared and show that the series does converge. For a lot of these problems, there's definitely multiple ways to do them. So if you've got a different way in mind, don't think that means it's, uh, it's not right. Number three, the thing that sticks out to me is the negative 1 to the n. That makes it an alternating series. So remember, there's then two things you have to show. You have to show that the limit as n goes to infinity of the stuff that's left over. We have to show that that equals 0, which it certainly does. And then you also have to show that, the, in this case, the n minus 1 over n squared plus n, you have to show that that's decreasing, which it also is. Um, I think you could argue that without too much difficulty. If you needed a rigorous justification, you could use the first derivative test. Uh, number four, the thing that sticks out to me in this problem is I see numbers raised basically to variables. Um, and I think with a little bit of algebra, you can bust this up and rewrite this as a geometric series with a ratio of negative 3 
over two, thir two to the third power, or negative three over eight, which is going to make it a convergent geometric series. So this one, um, number four, would converge. Likewise, I think we said number two should converge, and number three would also converge. Um, number five, three to the n over one plus eight n, all of that raised to the n power. The fact that there's this exponent of n out here makes me think to use the root test. Again, if you use the root test, it's going to get rid of that nth, uh, that nth power. And then you're just taking a limit. The limit of what's left over should be 3 eighths, which is smaller than 1, which according to the root test means it converges. Number 6, k plus 5 over 5 to the k. If you take the limit of this, you could you would get infinity over infinity. You could use L'Hopital's rule um, to show that the limit is 0. So anything could happen. Again, it could converge or diverge. But I think a lot of times if you have exponential functions, like 5 to the k, a good trick is to use the ratio test. And I think if we use the ratio test in this case, um, you can actually show that number 6 would, in fact, converge as well. Um, again, I haven't worked any of these out, so forgive me if I'm mistaken. Number 7, 1 over n times the square root of the natural logarithm of n. One way for sure that you could do it would be to make your summation into integrals. Um, and then just do a u substitution. Let u be the natural logarithm part. d u would take care of the 1 over n part, or if you made it 1 over x, whatever. But basically, you could use the integral test on this one. Um, what would happen? So you would get 1 over, you would get u to the negative 1 half, you would get u to the 1 half, which would be ln. I believe this should diverge if I'm uh, correct. I could be mistaken, but I believe number 7 number seven should diverge here for sure. Okay, number eight. In this one we have two to the k uh, times k factorial over k plus two factorial. And the thing that sticks out to me for sure in this problem is the factorials. Anytime I see a factorial, almost always you can do that using the ratio test. And it seems like if you typically do want to use the ratio test. It seems like um, the ratio test is a nice clean way to help get rid of the factorials. And I believe that this one should also converge. Number nine, e to the one over n divided by n squared. I think there's two different ways you could do this one. Uh, for sure, you could also do um, the integral test. You could let u be the exponent, one over n. The derivative would be one over n squared. Uh, you could go through that, turn it into an improper integral. I think another thing you could do, notice if you plug in, so to me, one way to do it, I kind of get rid of the numerator. That's what's confusing me really when I look at that problem, the e to the 1 over n part. That's what, that's supposed to be an e. Um, that's what's throwing me off more than anything. But notice if you cover it up, to me it's like, well, maybe it's 1 over n squared, which is convergent. So that makes me think maybe it's convergent. Again, that's a pretty, uh, a pretty shaky argument, but again, you know, these problems are set up to work. So if you plug in n equals 1, notice you'll get e, e to the first, then you'll get e to the 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth. You're, basi you're taking roots, so you're making it smaller. So I think you could also use the direct comparison test, and you could compare it to the series e times 1 over n squared, which would be a convergent p-series. So I think you could show two different ways, either the integral test or the direct comparison test that this one converges. Um, number 10, arctangent n over, excuse me, arctangent divided by n times the square root of n. Well, if you simplify the denominator, that's going to be n to the 3 halves. That's a convergent p-series. Well, if you remember, arctangent is bounded. Um, it's bounded above by pi over 2. So I think you could use the direct comparison test on this one, much in the same way that you could use the direct comparison test on number 9, and you could show that number 10 um, also converges. I think number 11 is the trickiest one of all of them. Um, sine of 1 over n divided by square root of n. And I think you can use the direct comparison test uh, with n to the 3 halves again. and you know, how did I come up with n to the 3 halves? Well, I guess if I make solutions, I'll, I'll clue you into that. That's one of the tricky things. Um, the idea is there's a limit. If you have sine of something divided by the same thing, 
well that limit equals 1. So basically I'm trying to think what would sort of give me an end to the 3 halves in the denominator. Um, what would I have to simplify, or excuse me, what would give me an end to 1 over n in the denominator? And it turns out 1 over n to the 3 halves does it. So again, pretty shoddy explanation, I think, uh, it, it, more than anything because it's tricky. So, but I think you can show number 11 also converges. Number 12, 5 to the k over 3 to the k plus 4 to the k. Um, okay, if you take the limit as k goes to infinity, we're going to get infinity over infinity. Um, so we're not sure if the limit is 0 or not. You could use L'Hopital's rule. I don't think that's going to make any headways. Um, but I think if you do a little bit of algebra, if you divide uh, the numerator and the denominator by 4 to the k, you'll see that this limit is actually infinity, so that it would diverge by the test for divergence. Okay, two more. We've got k squared <coughs> times e to the negative k. Um, again, I think one way that sticks out to me for sure to do this one would just be to use the integral test. Um, to integrate this, you might have, I guess you would have to use integration by parts. So it's going to be a little tedious, kind of a long problem to show. Um, my hunch, actually, I think maybe a better way to do it would be to just put the e to the k, make it e to the k in the denominator, and maybe use the ratio test. I think actually that would be a little cleaner and a little easier. And my guess is that that one's going to converge. And number 14, last but not least, we've got n squared minus 1 over n cubed plus 4. And in this one, um, kind of the same trick that I did earlier. If you take n squared over n cubed and simplify that, you're going to be left with 1 over n, which is going to be a divergent p-series. And I think if you use the direct compare, excuse me, the limit comparison test with 1 over n, you can actually show that the series diverges. Um, you may also be able to use um, the direct comparison test as well. So again, I think two different ways, but in both cases you would show that this one diverges. So, woo, all right, um, I hope this helps. Again, you know, just some tidbits to get you going because I think that's the hard part in general. So I apologize if you're looking for detailed, lengthy explanations. Um, if you want to see some, just feel free to post comments and I can probably, you know, churn out solutions to these pretty quickly so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So. All right, um, I hope this helps a little bit. Again, just getting started, I think, is half the battle on these. So as always, if you have comments or questions, feel free to post them.